All right, what's going on? Jeff Koga here, and I wanted to uh, make this uh, quick video because I think I saw a, a question in here talking about uh, Facebook group marketing, okay? Not just running Facebook ads and things like this, okay? Um, which Facebook ads, I'm still a huge fan of, but the way that we approach and we do it has been significantly different uh, than we had when we originally started doing it many many years ago so but anyways let me talk about Facebook group marketing because sometimes people presume that just simply if you're a real estate agent real estate investor you're a servicer or whatever it is and we see it even in this particular group where simply posting something in the group um, with a call to action is a way to get business All right now does that work Right, and the answer is yeah. If you do enough of something, it always, always works, okay? But the spillover effect of marketing or any marketing, it can be a positive thing or it can be a negative thing, right? So let me give you some kind of a, go into story time on this, right? So many, many years ago, we used to do kind of the automated posts uh, and post tons and tons of stuff on our pages and other even uh, Facebook group when they launched. And we would automate that by using um, Hootsuite, right? It was an automation tool for social media. And all we simply did was put all our call to action in okay and not only that but we would post every single day into those groups and uh, post on our page every single day okay we randomly picked the time and did it work yeah, at that time it started to work right we'll get people to click on it click on it we're monitoring the clicks go up okay and then we we're just like ah let's make it better so guess what we did we ended up figuring out testing out different times that we started finding out that hey you know what right after nine o'clock was a good time for people to do it when our click you know marginally went up and things like that okay and then uh, we decided you know what screw this our reach is starting to come down right and this is where when the uh, Facebook ads and stuff like that were going on and the reach started coming down now, so guess what we did we decided to post more often okay so we went on and posted like literally every hour okay and what we started doing was because when we were posting every day right we would have like content for seven days straight different content right different landing pages different call to action to do so when we decided to post every uh, hour and stuff we just said hey you know what let's post seven times a day so we took that content and we stacked it all on top of one day all right and then that's what we started doing and then um, we would do that like on a Tuesday and then we saw some better results right so we're just like ah you know what let's stack some more so we started stacking 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 now as time went on right like in most marketing things okay is that things change so the effectiveness started to come down because everyone else started doing it because they were watching I'm sure what we were doing as well as what we were teaching right so so everyone else started doing that that kind of the shotgun I call it the shotgun approach right we're blasting it out right it works right it's like like every door direct if you have done direct mail you know what every door direct is does it work Yeah, 100% you hit a same route over and over and over again it, it's going to work right so it's the same concept so that was working all right now fast forward time now to where we're at in 2017 things are different okay why is because these groups are now turning into little micro ecosystems like this one is an ecosystem this particular group I've been trying to grow and nurture but um, you know there's tons of people and you will be surprised some of the people that are in here right some of my good friends are in here you know they're outside of the real estate servicers some run a multiple seven-figure businesses um, uh, some people are investors broker loan offers and stuff like that but they don't really come in here and give too much content right now why is because I think the the interaction in here and some of the questions that are being asked so that's why they don't actually come in here and ask or answer even questions so I made it this quarter coming in for Q4 that I'm gonna drop some more content in here and one of the reasons why I'm doing this okay now if you pay attention to what's going on with the other people's group it's the same concept okay because there's there's three ways to grow Facebook group marketing okay number one is what majority of the people do 90% of the people do is that they try to go on to someone's group and post stuff in there now some of the other people that are a little bit sophisticated guess what they'll do they'll try to build their own group all right, nothing wrong with that, okay? All right, now I'll give you kind of the, the, the breakdown and I'll tie it into how all this works, okay? Another way to do this is you can go out and buy a Facebook group, okay? I have been actively buying Facebook groups for myself and my clients that I partner up with and stuff like that for the last 18 months to 24 months now, I've been buying Facebook groups. You might be like, how the heck do you actually buy Facebook groups? It's simple, you hit up the admin and you say, hey, you know what, can I buy this? 
That's what you do, right? And uh, let me tell you a story on how I discovered this, okay? Uh, first, the strategy, all right? Is I discovered this and back in 2009. 2008 was the year that I started doing video marketing in the space of real estate, right? I didn't have a beard or anything, so I looked really young. And uh, I started talking about the collateral debt obligation on YouTube, okay? So if you go on it, you search Jeff Koga, and then you put like securitization or collateral debt obligation, you'll find that video. It has over like, I think like 50,000 views or something like that, right? So I started discovering video marketing at an early age, right? So I started doing it. Now, at that time, it was literally like a bobblehead video that I'm like talking like this, okay? And then literally, I'm like reading off like a notepad that I had, and I was reading off that, okay? And um, when I was part of a mastermind group, right? Now, this mastermind group, it was not in the real estate space. It was an internet marketing mastermind group, okay? This is the key, internet marketing mastermind group. And I got in a conversation with a friend who you know, ultimately became one of my mentors um, at that time, and he started talking about buying YouTube videos. And I was just like, why the hell do you wanna buy YouTube videos? Because he was telling me about a story how he bought a video about a baby that was giggling that had like a million views, right? A million views, this weird video. And I said, how is that gonna help your business, right? That's what I asked him. And then he was just like, Jeff, you don't understand how the internet works right now. And he said, Jeff, currently right now, Google loves, for SEO purposes, Google loves YouTube. And uh, if you actually buy a YouTube with YouTube video with tons of views on it, if you put your link in the description section of your website, regardless if it's related or not related, it doesn't really matter, Google will index it as a really good backlink and you'll get ranked organically on top of the Google search engine right so in layman term what does that mean it means that if you put your own link in the description of the YouTube regardless if it's related to your industry or not sheer fact that it has views on it Google will index it and your search will go up right so he told me how he started buying tons of videos and I was just like well how'd you figure out which one to buy it was just like well I first started off with looking for videos that had like 10,000 to 50,000 views on it and they only had one video posted Right? And I was like, why'd you do that? And because like probably some mom or dad or some college kid that posted a video and it got some views. And because of that, hey, you know what? They might be willing to sell it for only a couple uh, tens of thousands. And I was like, oh, okay. So how much are you buying it for? He's all like, well, some of them I'm buying for 40 bucks. Some of them I'm buying for 50. The one that I had a million dollars, I paid a couple hundred bucks for. And I was just like, oh, okay. So I decided immediately when I heard that, I came back from this mastermind group, right? The internet marketing. And I started applying that, okay? And I started buying tons of different weird videos, like cat videos, and dog videos, right? And things like that, right? Baby videos, a little prank videos, and dumb, dumb videos. And I started backlinking it, and it started working. Now, at that time, it worked. Can you do this strategy now? And the answer is no, it's not gonna work, all right? So I learned that on being able to buy underpriced assets from people that did not know the value of what they were holding in their possession. And I was able to acquire it and then reposition that asset to be able to favor my business, okay? So I started doing that. So the concept of buying a Facebook group came from that, right? Where I was just like, you know what? I see the trend that's going on. Everyone's trying to build Facebook groups, so let me start acquiring Facebook groups so that way, hey, you know what, one, I can eliminate my competition coming into my marketplace, and then number two, I can play offense, right? So both, I'm playing offense and defense by doing this, right? Because if I'm acquiring Facebook groups in my local marketplace, I'm not allowing it to grow organically, so my competition can't do it, and then it's gonna be like, it's not gonna work, right? So again, some of the ones I own, I don't even show up as an admin on it, but I own it. It's a real estate related in my backyard some of them I show up as an admin on it and it shows like some of the agents I work with and stuff like that and it's branded under their name so I started hitting up the admins and trying to acquire the group okay now first off I didn't know what to evaluate a group for right so I was just like you know what let me go ahead and hit these people up for a couple cents and I put a metrics on there I was just like you know what I'll offer to buy it for two cents a member right so I started searching and at that time there was a tool that you can run it will like really analyze the uh, Facebook right and it will be able to pull it up and you'll be able to see which one actually had the most activity and it kept track of it and which one was growing the fastest right which one was stale and things like that right so I ended up putting a list list together using that software extracted it and then I gave that list to my assistant and then I said hey log into my Facebook account and hit up every single admin with this message uh, basically says hey you know I saw you're an admin for this particular group wanted to see if you're possibly interested in selling I know it sounds weird but if you are interested 
interested in selling. Um, we are interested in possibly buying. Please let me know either way. So we started hitting those people up and guess what happens, right? We started getting responses, responses. They'll be like, um, is this a scam? And no, we're not, right? Yes, maybe. What's the price? Hey, here's my price, right? And people will show, hit you up with like, oh yeah, I want 20,000, right? Some ridiculous amount, like, or is this a scam, right? And you'd be like, no, Google my name. I'm the real deal, you know? Like I got, I'm not trying to scam you a couple hundred dollars and then I'll flat out tell them, hey, you know what? I'm willing to pay two, two cents a member in this, right? And then some people will say no. Some people will try to counter you, right? And things like that. And um, if you did enough of that, we start acquiring it. So the first one I did, we acquired it for three cents a member and uh, there was 15,000 members in there. All right, 15,000 members. And it was a real estate related group. Okay, so I was like, cool, I'll pay that all day long, right? Because it's an asset that I can grow. So we bought that, right? We started negotiating and then um, we started acquiring all the real estate ones. My clients started doing the same thing. And then it dawned on me afterwards. I was just like, you know what? People join the group because the sheer fact of social proof, because it's the same concept of uh, why do some people watch a video that have millions of views uh, versus a video that only have a couple hundred? right it's social proof right it's the confirmation bias that we have in our brain just say same concept as this is that if you're walking on a busy street and someone looks up like that and they're staring up the chances of you looking up and saying what the heck is up there the propensity is very high right why is because it's a cognitive bias that we have and it's just the way that we tend to react to that right we're just like ah okay so we're gonna do that so I ended up hitting up I went wider after I started acquiring the asset right I was just like you know what some of these people know what it's worth, right? Um, these groups, right? Like I bought some groups off some real estate agent, right? Because I'm pretty sure they needed money or something like that. Um, because I checked out their Zillow profile and they were really ain't getting any business. And they were just probably like, man, I got this group of like probably like 6,000 people, but I'm not getting no business in it. So I'm going to sell it to Jeff for like 700 bucks or whatever. And then I ended up buying it, right? Seven for 700 bucks. Okay. And then I was just like, you know what? there might be some more people that's willing to sell. So I ended up going wider and I started acquiring groups in different niches, right? Like dog people, right? Uh, people that likes hiking, uh, people that like music, people that like jazz, right? Like all different types of niches, right? Hitting the admins up and wanting to sell, wanting to sell. And you know what I discovered, right? A lot of people in the art industry or entertainment, they really didn't want to sell because they had an emotional attachment, okay? It was really hard. And then they will start asking for a lot of money. But you know what who sold stuff, right? Were people that created a group for collectibles right I bought a Facebook group that had like fairy lovers in there you know you think it's weird right like fairy lovers and it has like literally like 30,000 people in there okay and it was like literally a local city of fairy lovers like people that who loves like fairies or whatever right and I bought that sucker for 250 bucks Right now, you might be saying like, what the hell? Why would you buy fairy lovers of 200 big? But I knew that those people are living in that location, right? So I bought it, all right? Now, what I wanted to do when I bought it, it was I wanted to see if I can flip that group. So what I did is I ended up buying it. And then guess what I did? I changed the damn name of the group from fairy lovers to I changed to a buy and sell group of that particular city. Now, when I did that, okay, it created a lot of havoc. All these fairy lovers hit me up and basically were just like, who are you changing this? Who are you? Like literally nasty messages sending me, right? And was like, I can't believe you're changing this name. So they're saying that, right? And I'm just like, okay, whatever. I just ignore them. People that were really nasty, I blocked them, removed them from the group. I did all kinds of stuff, right? But then I left it for a full quarter, right? And then guess what happens? people started posting of buy and sell, right? Like kind of like the Craigslist yard sale, right? And then the market started tipping over. It started tipping over, started, and then boom, it started growing and growing and growing. And then right when that happened, I was just like, you know what? Let me see if I can flip this. So I hit up one of my buddies um, that actually knew exactly what I did. And I was just like, dude, you want to you wanna buy this? And he was like, yeah, man, how much you want for it? And I was just like, you know what? And I threw out a number. I was just like, 3,500 bucks. You want to buy this? You know, um, I spent like what? All in with like service. I think my hard cost like 400 bucks, right? So I ended up flipping it for like three grand or whatever, right? And that was in the course of like six months period. Now you might be like, well, well Jeff, you know, why don't you just hold on to it? Well, because the one, I wanted to see that I, I can flip it, right? That's number one. And then it was in a city where I couldn't generate it right because it goes into the other other side of Facebook marketing right which is the final fourth one right which is you can pay admins to post in their group hit them up and be like hey you know what would you be interested in promoting my group for the next month and I can give you X amount of dollars right and then you have and then you're the exclusive person that gets promoted in the group
right? So the idea that I had was to hold on to that and then use that to actually get income from other people in the real estate space or other industry to have pay me to be able to post their particular business in that group. Right, so that was the idea, but I ended up just flipping it completely and making money, right? So going back to Facebook marketing, right, is that right now, as it's hitting maturity, because you just can't simply post stuff and then hope that you're gonna get business out of it. You just simply can't, okay? So my recommendation, kind of recap is number one, is be very smart on how you post, okay? How you post, you have to be really, really smart, okay? That's number one. Um, the other one is, one, go build your own, okay? Go build your own group, uh, but make it, what, city-centric, Another one is go buy it from someone else that already built it, right? And negotiate an offer to go buy it. And the other one is what? Rent it out, pay someone else to actually physically post it so that way you don't get kicked out of the group because tons of time, if it's someone that's, you know, it's an admin, you simply post like a lead capture or a call to action type of stuff like, check out my deal or hey, check out this link to find out how much your house is worth, right? Or hey, you need to buy and sell? Contact me, right? Like they're gonna block you and they're gonna be like, hey, you know, get the F out of my group, right? Especially if it's not related, okay? Going back to kind of like if I went into a ferry group for a particular city and then I went in there and it's supposed to be about ferries and I'm posting about real estate stuff. Come on, right? Like it's not, it ain't gonna work, right? They're gonna be pissed off at me. So those are some of the things that you can do, right? Now, how does this apply in other parts, right? Is uh, you can go into B2B, you know, type of groups, right? And you can offer to buy it, offer to partner up, right? So there's, there's tons and tons of other ways to do it. You just gotta simply think outside the box. But I challenge every individual, right? Is this, is that if you see people in your marketplace doing that openly right the chances of it being very effective is very low all right it is okay all right i know some people say hey there's no such thing as competition you should readily share every single thing that works in your business with everyone else and let's be honest here man if that was the true case why would we have something like monopoly and certain types of rules and regulation in the government no okay but a mastermind group is a little bit different okay especially a high level mastermind group right like in this group we have almost close to 15,000 people and we can't really even get into a high level discussion about a lot of stuff is because because people are like, ah, ah, you know, uh, and that kind of stuff, right? So we're asking like surface level questions in here, but I wanted to challenge you to look at marketing completely different because remember at the end of the day, it's about how much you're willing to pay right both in monetary capital or in human capital right when human capital is if you go out and do the damn thing yourself like go build a facebook group right um then it's your time that you're transferring it to get it and or monetary capital if you want to go buy the damn group from someone else okay or you want to go you know lease someone else's group to do a paid post in there makes a world of a difference okay so so i wanted to at least share that with you that either way there's a cost to it the question is how much is it and how much are you willing to actually invest to actually get that so again kind of wrap it up is that think differently okay think differently because remember Earl Nightingale all right if you have never read his book it's a super old book but it's a really one of the best books ever okay um, it's called lead the fields all right and he talks about it when, where he says majority is always wrong and us as an individuals in this space of real estate we tend to become echoes in our marketplace and the sheer fact that why we become echoes is because we copy what everyone else is doing in the industry thinking that that is the best way to do it because we saw someone else do it so again do something different and try out those processes that I just gave you on the Facebook marketing way and guarantee you that it will work. And I know I said final thought, but here, let me give you another way, okay? Now, you might be saying, hey, Jeff, well, how does this actually relate into me being able to get more business, okay? A couple things. Number one, you can, okay, um, which is for another live stream. But the easiest way to do this is if you simply acquire a group or build a group, how much of a conversation can you have when you sit down with the seller and then they say, hey, what makes you different? Then you'd be like, hey, I have a Facebook group of almost 12,000 people in this particular city. Ask your other agents that you're interviewing if they have that or not, right? So one particular agent I work with, he has two groups, right? And if you actually add those two groups up, I think the total aggregate amount of people in that group is over 30,000 people locally here in Southern California. All right, so um, having that conversation alone will help your conversion just on that front alone. All right, so that's what I got for you. Hope you enjoyed it. If there's any questions, leave them below and I will try to attempt to answer them. This is Jeff Koga. I'm love. I'm out. Let's have a deep conversation about marketing because we I love this stuff. So love y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.